All right, Will. A lot of people were asking for me to talk about this, and I put it off for too long. What's that? It's uh, two words which sound incredible when you put them together. Uh. Y'all know what those two words are? Quantum supremacy. That's how I start most mornings. The alarm goes off. I just shout, quantum supremacy. <laughs> In your underwear? Yeah, I do. Just outside. I that's I don't I'm not I don't know if life is real until I shout that, mm. and then I feel grounded and rooted in reality. Uh, it it's been floating around. I realize people have been Google made the statement a while ago, and then lots of articles popped up about it. And it's a cool. It's certainly a cool topic. It's just right now. The target or the application is not necessarily clear. Can you explain what quantum uh, computing is? First of all, how dare you? That's rude. But second of all, yes, yeah, sort of. Okay. All right. So what do you got? Look, a typical computer it works in a language of ones and zeros. Binary. Binary. And of course, of course, there's a tremendous combination of ones and zeros available mm -hmm. it seems it seems dynamic on its own and it's well suited for certain types of calculations and processes and so forth in order to reach some next magnitude of computing power th they through this hardware had to essentially change that particular mechanism the one and zero mechanism and come up with a dynamic version of it and that thing is the thing they're calling a qubit. Yes. So there's bits and then qubits. Right? Bits and then yeah. qubits. Okay. And the qubit thing, there's a great video. A great video that Wired did. Was it Wired? Was it Wired? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's a great video in which it's explained in five different ways. Quantum supremacy. Or maybe it's quantum computing. Uh, it's Wired? Is it this one? F five levels. Yeah. Okay, this is from a year ago, but... It explains quantum computing as a concept. Quantum supremacy is a bit different because quantum suprem supremacy implies the ex like the the functionality actually proving that in oh, in one specific circumstance yes the quantum computer is superior to the traditional computer. Granted, if you watch that particular video, it seems not that one will necessarily completely replace the other, but instead they may coexist in order to complete different tasks. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of a scare relating to Bitcoin and encryption and what quantum supremacy could mean from a computational perspective, a horsepower perspective, that it could potentially crack problems, specific types of problems, a lot more rapidly. Mm -hmm. But getting back to the initial, to the basic explanation a one and a zero can either be a one and a one and a zero the explanation method used in the video from wire is like a coin with a heads and a tails the qubit on the other hand can either be a one or a zero at all times yeah they it can't change states exactly so you picture the qubit like the spinning coin that is always a one or a zero even though you can't necessarily identify it it's in some sort of a dynamic state this video is going to do a far better job than I will of giving you a more comprehensive view of quantum computing. And it does so in a, in a great way of adjusting the complexity of the explanation through stages, starting with a young, what is it, like a 10-year-old, then a teenager, then an undergrad, then a grad school student, and then an expert, if I recall correctly. And the questions change. There's a great comment on this video, by the way. Scroll down. Because it says more about the individuals. It says something about in, uh, individuals as well in relationship to the questions they asked in this video. Scroll down a little bit more. That's the one. Read more, where it's L1, L2, L3, L4. Click the read more button. Yes. Okay, this is cool. Level one. This is the young person asking about quantum computing in the face of a gigantic quantum computer. The question from the youngster, how can this help me with my homework? The question from level two, the teenager, how can I impress people with this? This all happens in the video, by the way. Level three, how can I access and explore this? 
that's the undergraduate student. Level four, the grad student, how can I help you? This guy basically asks for a job mid explanation. And level five, the expert, how will those behind us make use of this? And it's, it's, this is a cool map for how your perception in life changes as you progress through it, as far as how you see your purpose within it and what you deem important throughout it. Mm -hmm. How it's very superficial and, and self-centered early on. Yeah. You see how that works? I'm still at level one. You're level one. You just want some, some help on the homework. Yes. Well, I think a lot of people maybe are. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I found that to be a really interesting comment. But nonetheless, it, 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 of course, the explanation becomes far more complex as you move through it. But it's that basic idea that by having these qubits in this dynamic state, the, their potential, at least uh, theoretical potential, is far more dynamic than a one one zero type of setup because of the speed at which they can interact. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, th the hardware component's a whole different story because the hardware explanation for this quantum computer that's in this video, th most of that is cooling. It's yes. a tiny little chip at the bottom, and most of the thing is cooling. It's like a refrigerator. That's why it looks so strange. Yes. Even like its environment has to be in like a, a cooler, essentially. It's incredible. So anyhow, Google claims that, they're, that they've achieved quantum supremacy in their implementation of a quantum computer and that, that it could change the future of encryption because those types of problems have the potential to be cracked by this level of computing power in a way that what traditional computing would take like lifetimes right. to potentially compute. And so it bring it brought up a Bitcoin question and then that Andreas Antonopoulos guy had to come out and say, Bitcoin's fine, how dare they? And then other uh, companies that are also invested in quantum computing like IBM came out and said, no, they don't have quantum supremacy, it's the same thing. Uh, but yeah, here's a, here's a, here's a cool... Here's a cool section of this article. Sycamore, which is the name of it, solved a particularly difficult problem in 200 seconds. For comparison, Google said the world's current fastest classical computer, one called Summit owned by IBM, that's as big as two basketball courts would take 10,000 years to solve the same problem. So if, if I understand it correctly, what Google is saying is in this very specific application, they've achieved quantum supremacy. Not in every single application, but in this specific application. And therefore, they think down the road they can replicate this outcome in a wider variety of potential tasks and situations. And therefore, supremacy is mm -hmm. achieved as a whole. Yes. Someday. Somehow. Hopefully soon. It's very, it's very complicated, Will. <laughs> yeah the, the, uh, the application uh... by the way people i think a lot of people are also wondering okay encryption what can you do with this uh this is another area where the original video was that i referenced was really good talking about how uh in biology it's incredibly uh, complicated and resource intensive to run synthesis simulations and things like this yes. so within science there's there's actually a need in certain areas of study and research for this improvement, uh, there's other examples you can think of. AI, AI, uh, even deep fakes type of stuff. At, yeah. at some point, where there's all this like cr cr crazy amount of pro uh, processing timeline mm -hmm. to get these really s slim outputs. Granted, again, it's not. I mean, it's not really ready for that yet. There's a lot of research that still has to be done, and. Uh, the that application is complicated. They need to bring in, get developers excited. I think that's why they put this out there, to bring more minds into the space, yeah. to work on the practical application and figure out how to utilize this newfound quantum horsepower. Anyhow, look, that's not a that's not a comprehensive explanation. That's pretty early on in the video as far as the complicated version of it yeah it gets deep you can go and check it out you should go and check it out it's really interesting i promise you. yeah it's good